for Core S Squared Software Solutions. Today we will be talking about Project 4, which is a texture synthesis application required for my computer graphics course here at Penn State. So texture synthesis is the ability to create a texture from a sample texture, or what we call a kernel. The reason why we do this is in certain applications, for example in video games or in 3D animations, artists can't necessarily texture an entire complex system. If you have to texture an entire city, there's no way that even hundreds of artists could sit down all day long and create all the textures. Instead, what they do is they use something called texture synthesis, which again, takes that sample image and then goes ahead and tries to use stitching or different kinds of technologies to create a larger image. What you see in front of you is an example of uh, stacked apples on the left, a very small sample scene in which there's only three rows of stacked apples. On the right, though, we generate a new image completely synthesized by the computer through procedural rendering to create six stacks of apples. Again, maybe it's not substantial, it's not something visually impressive, but it's very important technology when you're using large-scale large scale systems. Another example of texturing instead of apples would be fire. So fire is very difficult to compute uh, and animate, so instead what you could do is just repeat certain patterns. So the fire you see in front of you isn't too realistic, but it's computationally very, very cheap. Let's try out some other textures. So what you see in front of you is a bag of jelly beans, and jelly beans aren't particularly hard to uh, generate because you could just use a noise algorithm, but if you want to keep things fun and colorful, we could go ahead and generate one right in front of you. You'll also notice uh, that in the top left of the source image, that it's actually curved rather than a standard corner. And my uh, algorithm picks that up and actually does correctly uh, stitch all the other components of the image onto that deformation. So the algorithm is very tight, very uh, algorithmically complex, but implemented quickly. So the algorithm requires an implementation of Dijkstra's path planning algorithm. Uh, I implemented it, it's ON squared. Uh, I wrote it through the standard dynamic programming, uh, all in C++, and it works both on OS X and Windows, as well as the inputs could be of any arbitrary size. If the user chooses to, they could go ahead and change some of the other parameters of the application. For example, uh, the size of the text on, which is the, the small sample that you're taking of the original image. You could also change the size of the output. Uh, you could also change the sensitivity, the number of overlapping pixels, etc. Everything is documented within the application. All you have to do is just run dash h uh, via command line. So that's it.